probably the moment you've all been waiting for here in this tutorial. We're going to be covering the growls and the cut-up sounds, which is like the dubstep section of the song. Um, so there are actually four main sections to this. We have the main growl group, we have the lead, we have the little dubstep chops, and then I actually also added a little spot here from the Skrillex bass line that he did in his original mix here into my section. So let's take a quick listen to what these uh, four groups sound like. Okay, so let's go through these. We'll take it one at a time, and let's just talk about what's going on. Okay, first we're going to start with our main growl. Let's just hear the first bar. Okay, what we have going on is we have our main growl, and then we have our supporting growl. The main growl is pretty much what you're hearing. That's the main sound. The supporting growl is a little bit more of like a dirty electro kind of, you know, funky sounding bass that provides a little bit more umph in the mids and emphasis around the highs as well. Um, just making it a little bit thicker, um, a little bit dirtier, and mm, yeah, I would just say, you know, just adding just a good solid midsection to the whole sound. So let's just separate these two and hear them separate. So as you can see, it's okay to layer your sounds as long as you do it, you know, tastefully. And I think that this one definitely supports the main growl a lot. Without it, I don't think it would be as impactful. And to my ears, um, you know, it sounds right. Again, if we go in and we look in here, you know, we have a high and we have a low. You know, we have the EQ. And what's happening here is I'm on the low, I'm boosting, and um, you know, here I'm actually cutting. So I'm cutting the sound where I want it to perform here. I'm also leaving extra room at about 100 hertz where the kick normally would sit because I want to make sure that that kick punches through, especially on that first growl. It needs to be very impactful. So I added in Q and I also added uh, a little bit of uh, compression and side chain. Okay, where is it? It's one of these guys. There it is. So um, I also had one on the snare, but like I said, I did that in the studio. I'm not going to break down these sounds and how I made them. Obviously, this would take probably an entire tutorial video just on its own. But I'll have you know that there's plenty of videos out there that will let you know how to actually make a growl. I prefer FM8 over Massive. Reason being is a lot of guys are using Massive. And to me, this section in FM8, the pitch modulation section, makes the biggest difference. Okay, that's what you're hearing. You can hear it. Like that. Okay, um, so that's huge, and you have a lot of flexibility in here. If the sound were to actually continue, and I had the sustain on, it would continue wrapping in here. So you can actually do cool like chops. I don't want to, you know, mess up the sound now, but you know, you hit, you right-click this, and then you can make a spike here, 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 and then it'll actually, you know, make a chop sound and everything like that. And this is the release, but. Anyways, we'll do an FM8 tutorial on another day, but I just wanted you to know that FM8 is great for or, um, leads, pads, um, just, you know, basses, great for growls, and just know that it is kind of a, I wouldn't say difficult synthesizer to use. It's not preferred because it, it has a lot of different, um, you know, windows and features. It's not just, you know, one thing. It's, you know, it's got all these different sections, and it can get really complicated really quickly, okay? So, but if you do learn how to use it, um, you can definitely create a lot of really awesome sounds. I do know that I've heard Skrillex in, a, in an interview mention that this is his go-to. Um, you know, he, he said, you know, frequency modulation synthesis is definitely the way to go for growls. I also heard, heard Kill the Noise does the same thing. So that's just something to think about. And also, this is a really great feature. It's where you can have 
let's say we took the same growl sound, we made four of them, but then we adjusted the parameters just a little bit. And so you can kind of, you know, sweep through them as the sound plays and it'll really make your sound sound diverse. I've used that in my own tracks before and it really is incredible. So doing some sound design in FM8 is definitely something to consider. Okay, moving on, let's hear the, um, the supporting growl sound if we haven't. Yeah, we did, okay, cool. So this is actually made with, I, I believe, Silent. Yeah, and we have our, our mid, because it's more of a mid section, and our low, little compression. That's about it, nothing crazy. Remember, you know, you want to distort the highs, you don't want to distort the lows. So I'll play the two of these together again. Okay, so you can hear the slight differences, but you know, it's those small things that count. So always remember that. Let's move on to the lead. This is actually a really cool one here. I really like this sound. It mainly, I mean, you have this sound here in the beginning when it first hits. It's like the tail of the growl, because the growl goes rah, and then that comes in right underneath. So, so just imagine the growl there. I'll play it in a minute, but you can just imagine it for now. And um, this is the main part here. This is what catches the listener's ear. It's the tagline, if you will, at the end of the phrase. Let's hear it. You can't be mad at that. It's pretty fun. So let's let's just check out and see what's actually happening in this sound. My bad. So you can hear that they're all a little bit different. This is like the high, the low high. I would no the high low. Let's call it the high low. And let's listen to it again. Then let's listen to this one. You see how it sounds similar, but this has got a little bit more of a muffled low tone, and you can actually see that it has a mid in it as well. So we'll call it the low mids. I don't know why I call it the or the the high mids. Let's call it that. It doesn't matter what we call it. And then this one here is just the high tone. That's where all your mids are really sitting. And then we have the low mids sound here. Again, played all together. So as you can see, the different layers make sense and they all work with each other. And if you look at them and you go in here, You'll probably see that they're at different octaves as well. Let's just check that. Looks like so far we do have different octaves. And that's also something to consider. You know, you don't need four layers in the highs or in the mids or in the lows. You should have, you know, one, maybe two max layers in each octave if you have to. Um, but usually just, you know, having one of each is actually a good way to layer as well. But do it however you want, but just know that too much is clutter, so be careful how you're layering. I would have to say that I did this carefully so that it didn't conflict. Um, but the most important thing I wanted to mention about this section is that there is no bass. There's no low sub in here. And if you're wondering why I didn't put that in, it's because I wanted to make this here, the downbeat, which is something that everybody will be able to remember. Um, I wanted it to be impactful, so I wanted to have a good low hit to it. So let's just listen to two bars. These two bars will go to here, actually. And let's just listen to how this, when the sub drops out and when the drop comes back in, when it hits on one, let's listen to the difference in the way that it sounds without the sub in the lead. That's actually something that I learned from Dodge and Fusky in their tutorial videos. Um, you might want to check them out. They have some pretty cool stuff to say about um, a lot of the stuff that I've showed you here today. You know, um, you know, cutting, cutting out the low end. You know, just a little dip at 100 for the snare or for the kick, and 200 for the snare, stuff of that nature. 
just you know small things that you can do to help make your song your songs come through and you know sound right and making sure that you're leaving enough space for all the different instruments um so that's something you might want to uh, you might want to check out now let's move on to the dub chops let's hear that section <laughs> Okay, so you get the idea. Um, you always have this. You always have your main group, your main musical, melodic, growl group lead, you know, thing. And then you have your tagline, which is, you know, just one or two small sections where it provides a little bit more melody than what was happening in the bass. And then this is all the filler. This is all the goo inside that, you know, really seals the deal for the song. Without this stuff, you know, it's not really going to sound very good and you can actually add this stuff in here let's play this too you've probably heard this a thousand times but this is the the skrillex <laughs> so that actually plays into it as well it's part of the chops but i want to separate it so you can see what i brought to the table and you know what was actually given to me from deep port um, but all these different sounds they make a huge difference um you know you heard it so let's just play it all together again and you know, I didn't need to sit here and tell you the same thing over and over again, but it's pretty much the same stuff. You got your highs and your lows separated so that it all sounds good. And that's a nice round full sound. So let's hear <coughs> all of it together. And um, you know, I hope you're able to take some uh, really good knowledge and information from everything I've showed you here in my track. I know not, not a lot of artists or producers or DJs like to do this where they actually open up their tracks and show you what they have going on and how they made it but you know I thought it would be kind of cool this is you know one of my first tutorial videos and I wanted to make sure that um, you know I covered a lot of different you know topics and then I will focus on more topics later but anyways I hope you found this helpful um, in our next video I'm going to talk about the difference between the final mix and getting it done at a studio and master just so that you can get a perspective as a unsigned artist on the different uh, routes that you can take to be able to make your song sound better and what a home studio mix, what an actual studio mix, and a master sounds like. Anyways, so let's just listen to this section and we'll move on. <laughs> ¶¶